Welcome to the Trumpet of the Last Few Days. I'm Stanley Farrar. And I'm Robert Farrar. And I'm Joshua Farrar. So, interesting developments in Afghanistan happened really quick. Uh, you kind of cut or... off in the middle of your statement there. So, interesting developments in Afghanistan happened really quick, didn't it? Wow. Or as I like okay. to call it, Talibanistan. Yes. Um, Afghanistan folded like a wet paper bag. And watching the surrender of the Afghanistan troops, where they were just welcomed back uh, with a hug and didn't even have their weapons taken, it goes to show you who, uh, who's been getting trained all this time. Because they had no loyal soldiers. They had no one fighting for them. Yeah, they were all Taliban. The advantage of this is that they're now in all in one place. So it wouldn't take a lot to blow them all up. Yeah. That would settle a lot of our problems in the near future, too. Except it's not going to happen. But, uh... Only because we have coward in the White House. Ironically enough, um, the, the situation involving Afghanistan, the, the pulling out, is one of the few things that I actually agree with Biden's handlers on. I, I think How that we were it, overdue to, uh, to pull out of Afghanistan. I agree that it could have been handled better, a lot better. I, uh, I don't like the idea that we left in defeat, but I see the whole situation as a sunk cost fallacy issue of we've been pouring so much money and time and resources and people and into a situation that was never ours to fight and, uh, to begin with. And we shouldn't have been there in that manner in the, uh, to begin with. We should have just bombed, uh, leveled their entire country with bombs when we first got attacked and leave it at that. We shouldn't have been trying to prop yes, up this whole civil war. That's exactly what we should have. We should have firebombed their cities and then leveled the country. Yeah. And then left. And then well, left. Actually, if we leveled it, never gone in. Actually, you know, well, I we would have technically it, had had to have planes pull out. We uh, drone technology actually, wasn't quite there 20 years ago. There's a there's a part of me that says, hey, if perfectly good leveled territory, might as well just go in and colonize it, <laughs> make it a proxy state of ours. <laughs> it's good real well, estate. One thing's for certain. I don't I don't be, I don't believe in leaving on defeat, but they were approaching everything from the wrong faction in the first place. It was always limp wristed. Uh, panty waist um, approach that um, you would think it, the whole military was being run by a bunch of queers instead of taking and actually being run by men that actually knew how to fight. We are putting this up on you. We have to put this up. <laughs> uh, well, we've already tested their uh, their limits about as far as we can in most cases. One little thing isn't going to change it. Who? Uh, <laughs> I, I don't even care about YouTube at this point. <laughs> and so... So Dad has killed <laughs> They poisoned me. With water. How dare they? <laughs> that spring water is the natural, natural minerals. <laughs> Problem is, I got it all over the. We are cutting that part out, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Robert thinks I've caught COVID. 
I, I was... Listen, I merely threw out the idea that, you know, perhaps he'd gotten the American fairy. <laughs> well, there was a certain point in time that I'm pretty certain I caught pneumonia, but I was never tested for it, so I don't know for sure. I could have gotten the virus a dozen times already, and I'd never know. Uh, I was more talking about, like, in 2013. <laughs> but... That's a, uh, a long time ago at this point. Okay, well, anyway. <laughs> yeah, we... we They just took a half measure... Not quite from the beginning, because they did start off with shock and awe, didn't they? Not really. Yes, they did. I mean, they claimed oh, they started they off with shock and awe. I'm not sure that the, how valuable the target was. They sure poured a lot of missiles into it, though. Uh, pouring a lot of resources into a uh, unvaluable target isn't shock and awe. No. It's a firework show at best. But thing about it is, when we invaded, their military lasted as long against us as it did against the Taliban. Maybe not, uh, maybe less. Yeah. And they didn't even give up for us. <laughs> yeah, they did. Well, they didn't... Okay. You just looked at they... the video. It's like a, tra it's so... a tradition at this point. Oh, yes. Give up and join the other side. That's what they do. Well, they're, uh, they're we about... already know. They're about two nationwide uh, surrenders away from being the next France. Oh, oof. That's rough. We, we, the problem is, is so is our military. Yeah. Sadly. I mean, we go in, we wreck <laughs> them, and then we, and then we leave in defeat. My biggest uh, annoyance out of this whole thing is all of these idiots on the internet uh, completely... Oh completely uh, complaining about the, the United States leaving them to their fates. Like, for the past 20 years, you guys have been complaining that we've been there. And now that we're leaving, now you've got issue with it? Oh yeah, they're, they're partisan hypocrites, is what they are. The, uh, the U.S. cannot be both the world police and not the world police at the same time. Make up your mind of what you want us to be in your little perspective, and complain about the one, because we're not going to listen to you either way. It's, it's a basic rule of philosophy. So you cannot both be and not be at the same time. Well, <clears throat> we shouldn't be the world's policemen, first place. Agreed. But if we're good, but um, if we enter a war, it should be total war. I'm agreed with that for the most part. Corpses don't fight back. Well, look, I mean, if you look how pansified wars become, back in ye olden days, they would wipe out whole cities, every man, woman, and child. Because now they corpses say, oh, don't oh, fight back. They can't get retribution. <laughs> they say, oh, but that's a war crime. But there's no such thing as a war crime. It's only a war crime if you let them t uh, label it as such. If you shoot all the people crying war crime, then there's no one left to cry war crime. That's right. Civilians have been killed in every war in history, pretty much. The whole point of war is to make it so horrible they don't want to repeat it. And if you're not, and if civilians are off the table, then you can't you can't make it that way. Well, especially like insurgents, uh, the whole "don't kill civilians" rule basically makes it impossible to put down an insurgent because you can never tell the difference between the civilians and the rebels because the rebels are civilians. Right. 
So, as soon yeah. as they adopted that policy, well, Vietnam was lost from the beginning. From an ideological standpoint, it was over. But at the same time, it's what makes conquest of the United States impossible. Because either they eradicate us, or the war will never end. Well, except that the, the people who are going to try to conquer the United States don't obey that rule in the first place. Like I said, though, an eradicated population is not a conquered one. Sure. The land is taken, but the country was not conquered. It was eradicated. Genocide or nothing at all. Yeah. That's a fence. That's a well, <clears throat> when Israel was sent to the Promised Land, they were told to wipe out all the existing tribes in Canaan. To leave none of them remaining. They didn't do it. They didn't do it, and they've had tri Mostly trouble ever they since. They didn't go all the way. <laughs> because it was supposed to be genocide or nothing at all. Mm -hmm. The Bible actually teaches gen genocidal war. Well, not entirely. Because there, God did set down rules. He told them to offer them surrender first, and then if they wouldn't take it, kill every man, every male, leave the women. Except for Canaan, which was genocidal. Intentionally genocidal. Because God knew that um, if they left the residents there, that the, re uh, the locals would lead them off into idolatry. And they did. Time and time and time and time again. So they got subjugated and subju subjugated time and time and time again. Yes. <laughs> now Robert was telling me about a Brit that had a interesting view when it came to these people trying to escape. Yeah, the ones uh, falling off the plane that they shouldn't have been holding on to in the first place? Yeah. Anyone with a brain would realize that holding on to the side of a plane is suicide? Well, maybe they, they probably did know that. Didn't care. It's the same, uh, same thing that happened when Saigon fell, though. Have you noticed this only happens, though, when Democrats are in office? But the, I, uh... what the British man... What, what the British politician said, the British MP... He's a Tory, by the way. He... said... Well, when discussing the taking of refugees from Afghanistan and Britain. He said, sure, there are some people who will legitimately lose their lives if they don't leave, if they don't flee the country. But the rest of them, why don't they stand and fight? It's their country. They should defend it. That's, and this guy had been in, Af right there well, in Iraq. is the number one reason why I've got no sympathy for these people. Not a single one of them that I know of. That's a, that's a pretty major caveat, mind you, that I know of. Actually stood and fought. fought. None of them. No, there, were, there was combat. They, they did actually have some military encounter. There just wasn't much. The thing about it... Um... The Muslim population do, does great when they have somebody tied up or in a cage. They don't do so great when they have to, have to face a gun. And yet, uh, well, yet their insurgency groups do fantastic. Because they, for some reason, then they have zealotry, are willing to throw their lives away. Well, that's because those particular people believe that they're going to go to heaven and get 72 virgins if they take and die. Are they still virgins? Are they still virgins after they get the... 
I don't have a clue what they believe on that. Well, theoretically speaking, right? Both uh, Hindu no, I almost said Hinduism. Both uh, Muslims and Christianity believe in are monotheistic religions. Both of them believe in an all-powerful God. So theoretically, it is possible for an all-powerful God to make someone who is not a virgin back into being a virgin. It is neither practical nor sane to think that this would be something that he would do, but with all power being on the table, it is technically possible. Well, yeah, if you're going to take it from that perspective, yes, it's technically possible. The, um... It's, the it's Muslims, no less silly than thinking but, of a, uh, a virgin birth, actually. But that was very special circumstances. Very specific special very circumstances. Special. But they, they don't accept the virgin birth. No, they... No, no, they don't accept a lot of things. But do you know what they do accept? Pedophilia. A you know lot what of pedophiles. they accept? Surrender, apparently. <laughs> well, one problem we were having over there was them raping boys. And yet, according to Sharia law, that's a death sentence. But they yeah. did it anyway. They did it anyway. So they're hypocrites anyway. They don't actually follow their beliefs. Well, we've always known. They're a bunch known. of homosexuals. They, they only follow known. the ones that are one convenient the... to them. Like every That's one of the warnings we... When we were getting ready to take a med tour, they warned us to watch out for the locals because they were homosexuals and they were not above raping someone. Well, I mean, they had a big problem in India for a while that the Hindus were killing off the Muslims because the Muslims were raping the Hindus. Now, personally, if they're raping them, they deserve to be killed off. Agreed. And Britain's been having a problem with grooming gangs raping women for years. Usually they're children. not the only ones. Most of Europe has been having that problem. Mm -hmm. When it comes to evil, Islam is one of the most evil religions that has ever come down the pike. It's not the, uh, there are other ones too, of course, all paganism, um, Mormonism, there's not a coin's toss worth the difference between Islam and Mormon. The, um, Well, except for the fact that the majority of Mormons are redheads living in uh, Oregon. Uh, Why is there such a large portion of uh, redhead Mormons? What? When did that happen? I don't know. I've never met a redhead Mormon. Mormon. Same. I've met a lot of Mormons, but not redhead. I have Mormons. met a huge quantity of Mormons, and a good 70% of them are the pastiest redheads you've ever seen. Yeah, I've never... There was a, a large problem... There's a... Lar was a large problem with uh, having a high Mormon population in Mexico when I was in high school. But they weren't um, redheads. Well, I would expect not, considering... Where they were. Primary population of Mexico. Uh, Redheads don't survive very well down there. Depends. Depends oh, on where you I'm are. I'm a blonde and I survive fine. You're also a blonde perfectly capable of tanning. Yes. You don't fry like a lobster, peel off, and then do it again the next day. In fact, um, I barely tan here. 
Well, some places I'll get as dark as a Mexican. It's, you know, it's all circumstantial evidence, but for some reason, the grand majority of Mormons that I happen to have met have been redheads. Not all of them have been, but the grand majority of them. And I find that strange. Well... For a long time, they had a pretty narrow gene pool. True. And uh, inbreeding like that has been known to ca cause mutations, and red hair is a genetic mutation. So it's not all, it's not too surprising, but it is a little bit surprising that the proportion is that high. You know, once you start getting blue people, then you know you really then you know they've been drinking silver no they're actually the thing, the thing about it is actually, it's amazing none, none of you boys have red hair and that's not because... <laughs> with how recessive of a gene it is i'm not surprised none of us ended up with it But, uh, Especially family... considering uh, Jason's mm -hmm. proclivity to catch all the death genes. Oh. <laughs> Every yeah, single well, one we've had a I shortened his lifespan, he caught. <laughs> we've had a redhead in every generation except y'all's. Well, I guess, technically, we even have redheads in y'all's generation, they just have to be on my cousin's side. Yeah. They don't. What's Red amazing is that any of them turned out to be redheads. <laughs> With the amount of American Indian in my great grandmother, you wouldn't think that any of her kids would have turned out as a redhead, but they, one of them did. Well, in other news, speaking of mutation, coronavirus, it does that a lot. Yes, the right. coronavirus does Did he break mutate. up for you because he sure did on me? He did. All I got was, speaking of mutations, the coronavirus does that a lot. Has mut The coronavirus, it does that a lot. It should mutate itself out of existence, is what it should do. You'd think, with how fast it's mutating. So, as I'm sure anyone who's not living under uh, a rock... Has... Relatively speaking, it's not mutating all that fast. Mutated like four well, times in a year. Already. Yeah, but all of them have been mutated from the same strain. Just in different ways. In fact, the mutation rate is actually pretty slow considering that. If it had, if it had uh, mutated into the alpha variant, and the alpha variant had then mutated into the beta variant, which had then mutated into the gamma variant, which had then mutated into the delta variant, then we'd be having a high mutation rate. But no, it's the standard variant. It's the standard strain that has mutated into the alpha variant and then the beta variant, and then the gamma variant. I'm not sure any of the sources have actually said where the variant, if they're coming from each other, or the... I'm not sure the original even still exists. From my understanding, they're all branching off of the, sa the same tree. But, anyway, yeah, they... Although, as by anyone the sounds of not... the delta variant is probably going to be the first one that develops its own mutation. But yeah, as anyone who's not been living under a rock nose. They've been naming everything after Greek name because politics. You're you are not it is now racist 
call something after its country of origin. So the so-called Delta variant is really the Indian variant. So they're, they're, it blaming it on, in uh, it. they're blaming it on Greece. <laughs> yeah, it's all Greece's fault. So we're just going to name everything Greek letters <clears throat> to just reinforce the idea that it's all Greek's fault. They're the reason that the virus... They, uh, you've they, got the, they developed um, it to uh, re uh, reinvigorate their economy. You have the China virus, then the India variant, and now um, Peruvian. The next variant, the next variant of concern is the Peruvian variant. So, roughly ten percent of the cases in the U.S. are cases of the Peruvian variant. So it. It's a decent amount, especially since they said that the Indian variant would take over the cases in the U.S., and now it's got a competitor that is successfully competing. But the interesting thing about this variant, so the Indian variant was especially effective. They made a point of that, and it's been spreading very rapidly among the non-vaccinated population especially, except that they've noticed it's also got a knack for going vaccinated population. So we'd really so need much to be so... concerned if the India variant went through uh, the Netherlands and then the Dutch would just spread it across the world. It would be As the... they make their trade deals, yeah. <laughs> well... Be the East India Company all over again. <laughs> the Peruvian version, though, is uh, ignores the vaccine. Josh, the Dutch was Hudson Bay. Well, East India was England. No, the the East India and West India uh, Trading Company were ori originated in the Netherlands by the Dutch. No, because Crown Authority Google that it. the East Google it. actually conquered India. But anyway, the, um, uh, anyway, so they've had to actually drop their measurement for the efficiency of the vaccine. All three vaccines in the U.S., they've had to drop it. So much so that Pfizer and Moderna went from their 90-some percent efficiency ratings to into the fifth. It's about time, too. I was getting sick of all those, uh, those politicians saying, we have a very safe and effective vaccine to use. <laughs> well, evidently, they're, they're getting sick. Evidently, they're getting sick of something else. <laughs> well, they can't, they can't say it anymore, because it, regardless of whether they can deem it as safe, it's definitely not effective if the efficiency rate is down into the fifties. Yeah, it it's pretty bad. But the Peruvian variant, what makes it interesting? I haven't heard anything about its infectivity, but it is, it's mutated in three different areas that are specifically resistant resistant to the vaccine. The primary w mutation is the fact that its spike protein has mutated. And the whole point and of... to settle it... To settle your earlier argument, the East India Company was founded in the 31st of December 1600 by the British. Told. Was I thinking of the West India Company? No, that was also British. <laughs> what? In fact, the East India Company's flag looks like the Br uh, British Union Jack stuck on the blue pat pattern of the American flag with the stripe. The only hmm. Dutch company I know of is the Hudson Bay Company. There was a that really time. big Dutch company around that time. Yeah, the Hudson Bay Company. Yeah, the Hudson <laughs> Bay Company. Hmm. 
That's the one that owned a good chunk of Canada at the time. Oh, I'll have to double check everything that I heard uh, earlier. But like for no other reason to see what sources are wrong. But <laughs> to not use well, them I again. Google it, so <laughs> yeah, but, but if anyway, I'm, if I'm using wrong sources, then I need to know so I can stop using those sources. And if I'm Come using to find right, out, you sure. get And if I'm using right sources, <laughs> then I need to use that information to rub it in Robert's face later. <laughs> <laughs> I just know our family has ties to the Virgi had ties to the Virginia. Yeah, I was a I was aware of our ties to the Virginia company. And I'm pretty sure that was British. That was British. Oh, definitely. The crown ended up taking it over and dissolving. <laughs> Gotta love hostile government takeover. <laughs> Technically, the Crown took over the East Indian Company, too. Yeah, well, yeah, it took over all the companies. But when a company becomes powerful enough to conquer a subcontinent, that is a, that is a problem. <laughs> and they did it. Yeah. I'm pretty sure they had Crown Authority before they did it, but they did it. Conquered all of India. A company did. With its own troops, its own weapons, own gunpowder. Well, maybe they just wanted to keep them company. They wanted them in the company, that's <laughs> <coughs> Gives a, a whole new meaning to they talk uh, about your soul um, in the company store. They talk about mercantilism today. They don't know what the meaning of the word is. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they don't. They don't even know. Arguably the most powerful company in all of history was the East India. But, uh, they also seem to forget that mercantilism and capitalism are not the same thing. Oh, no, they're not. They're not at all. It's basically... Well, it is. It's corporatism. That's what it is. And they... Certain entities in the U.S. want to go back to that structure. Of course they do. It's in their vested interests. Actually, there's a tremendous amount of libertarians that want corporate. Yeah, but those are those ones yeah. are people who don't know their history. They believe that corporations would never do anything that would take a harm anyone, unlike the government. So, uh, yeah, tell me how many corporations are woke. Most of them. Tell me how many corporations are run by spineless slugs. I mean, let's be honest. People who don't know what what the soulless corporate machine can do haven't done any research in their history. And this is coming from people who actually, our family, were corporate owners. <laughs> I mean, between the, the East India Company... And that Dutch company that uh, that took over Canada, and the the coal companies in uh, the United States, and the railway companies also in the United States. <laughs> there is a lot of examples of corporate greed. We don't have to destroying people. We don't lives. have to go that. We don't have to go that far back. We can look at big tech. Oh, we can look at Amazon as a modern day example, but going back shows an example of what happens if they go unchecked for uh, long enough. Microsoft, Amazon, and Google, uh, Walmart. YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Walmart. When I was a kid, Walmart had a lot of competition, but um, the, the, there's Wilco, there was Gibson's, there was Kmart. I remember Kmart. Uh, and Kmart's I weird too. packed with Little Caesars at the time. That you, I have, there was always a Little Caesars in every Kmart. I'm not surprised at all that Kmart went under. Yeah. 
Kmart went under because of bad management. Yes, it did. And Walmart will probably go the same way. And um, Gibson's went under because of bad management. I don't know why Wilco went out, but um, the it, but um, well, Woolworth still exists. I, I pointed out recently to Dad that the corporate structure really is just an attempt to apply governmental oligarchy to a business. And it has about the same sort of soul-sucking <laughs> manner. It just quashes innovation. Because nobody, none of the oligarchs want to take be the ones to put their head on the chopping block. Well, that's exactly what causes the death of their company, too. Is the weird thing. Yes, it is. It, it causes a slow bleed out death of their company. And they get more and more predatory in the process to grasp onto straws to prevent themselves from dying out. Well, which is why they always Spe push for corporate socialism. They want yeah. a security net for when they're bad, ma to keep their bad management from crushing their company and getting them out of power. One thing about it, talking about corporation, a lot of stupid Americans have been investing a lot of money in Chinese companies. And currently, the government of China is stepping in and examining those companies to retake them over. Well, it makes zero sense to the money in Chinese. Yeah, especially when China can just take away your shares without giving you any recompenses at any time they want. Yeah. Yeah, they can. I mean, you could theoretically sue them in American courts and put sanctions on them, but that's about it. That won't not do gonna... anything. The na They're a foreign government. The naivete. Sanctions won't touch them. They're so naive, it's unreal. It always blows my mind how naive the people in China are after 60 years of, of being ruled by this dictatorship. Some of them actually still believe they have rights. But, um, the, but Americans putting money into an enemy nation is stupid. Well, the mere fact that America, America has a lot of questionable laws like we allow foreigners to own land here that doesn't make any sense why would you allow not part of your country to own land in your country and they allow foreign business by american business yeah um the japanese have bought a ton of them so the german and the chinese as well i need for, for a while, AMC was owned by the Chinese until this whole stock crisis. And then they sold a lot of their stock. Legend Pictures is still owned by the Chinese. Um, there's uh, a lot of companies that are owned by the Chinese that people don't even know about. We forgot about two companies while we were listing the the evil monopoly machines. Two major ones. Mm. Disney. Disney. And, and Activision Blizzard. Yeah. Activision Blizzard. Well, so is Activision Blizzard is hated. Blizzard. But... Yeah. Blizzard, though, I thought was owned by the Chinese. Uh, it's no, currently owned by Activision. Chinese. I don't know who owns Activision. Yeah, I don't. But they, what they did was a merger. That was... So they renamed it Activision Blizzard. With Activ a merger is always just yeah, a, I... uh, a more subtly worded buyout. Yeah. Thing about it is, is that um, I was I thought the Chinese had bought majority stock. They may have at one point, 
And if the Chinese own Activision, then it's possible they still do. But all I know right now is Activision owns Blizzard. All I no, know is that Activision is still run by the same guy who started running it in the 90s. Now, talking about China, the a Chinese doctor took in he was looking at blood samples of of himself and others who've been inoculated for or, um, COVID. Found out that the Ch- Chinese is inoculations within three months has a nine is a ninety five percent drop in in antibodies, and then the next month another seventy five percent drop in antibodies. He so said wait, within six vaccine. months you have no resistance at all. I no. didn't even know that the Chinese vaccine gave antibodies. That was always Apparently kind of a looming question with it. No, that explains why Apparently the majority of people who are, who are getting it these days are ones who have had the vaccine. For the now, Chinese, I, explains I, ours. He only they tested the Chinese any data like that. Yeah, he didn't have access to the other. Um, they sus- they're now trying to get people here to take a third booster shot for her. Um, because they're losing resistance. They just won't tell us how much they're lo- losing. Pfizer and Moderna are just like, yeah, more government money. So, for, for people who aren't aware, a working vaccine will never need a booster shot. Well, that's need, not 100 It may need multiple things to get the full dosage initially, but after your final dosage, it will never need another booster shot because your immune system should already know how to fight the disease by that point. You have to have booster shots for te- every 10 years. I would argue that's because they're not using a vaccine. Not a real one, anyway. Could be that tetanus just changes so rapidly. Well, that's possible, too. No. But in that case, know, you're not getting a booster like shot a so much as a new vaccine. Like with, uh, with the flu. You get a completely different vaccine for a different strain of flu every year. Yeah. It's not a booster shot. Now, currently there are lawsuits. A, a lot of companies started mandating vaccines, and some of those companies are not factor health ex- religious. Ex- so there are currently a lawsuit. the fact that they can't mandate it as long as the, the vaccine is experimental. <laughs> yes. And is under emergency use authorization, not full authorization. But there are currently lost 25 out of the 50 states that are going down. And we'll see see how that works. Let's see if they can pull off a vaccine mandate or not. Well, they'll certainly try. Sadly, well... they will. Canada came out and stated that that you had to be able to prove you had the vaccine unless you could prove you had a valid medical reason not to take it. So not even caring about they the... didn't. Oh, they don't even care about religion. You have no freedom of religion in Canada. I started to say China, but it's Canada. China, yeah. <laughs> a lot of similarities. Yeah, in China. But uh, here in the United States, the Democrat politicians are complaining that, that um, the religious exemptions in our law are one of the major holdups to their, their agenda. Well, they've always been anti-religion. Well, it's kind of hard to be a 
racist um oh I'm trying to think of a, w a way to put this um if you're about to say racist authoritarian racist... Muslims are all like I got you we're religious, racist, and authoritarian. That's true. The, uh, the Muslims do uh, do qualify for that, and the Democrats are the non-religious, racist, authoritarian. So pick your poison. Well, one requires believing in a god who hates everyone but a certain type uh, type of people. The other one requires you believe in, believing in no god. Of course, the middle ground is believing in a god who created and loves everyone. In which case, you can't afford to be racist, because then you're directly against god himself. One difference is, is that the Muslims don't believe that he loves a specific group. They believe he hates everybody. Ah, even well, that them. makes it really easy to get ra to be racist. To to, I can I I don't know much of the Quran, but I have been read a few passages of it, and one of the passages is, "Who knows if Allah will be merciful in the day of judgment?" They don't even know. See, they. Uh... They don't believe that they can know whether they're going to make it into heaven or not unless they die in jihad. And even then, the Quran doesn't talk about jihad. That's part of the other book. <laughs> Forgot what the. Yeah. It's kind of, uh, that's one reason why I compared it to the Mormonism, because. The, uh, the Book of Mormons doesn't cover the majority of the Mormons' beliefs either. It's their other doctrines, that uh, doctrinal books that were written by their prophets that they put, uh, that list the majority of their beliefs. Well, that the same is true with, them, with Islam. Yes. In fact, there's so so little documentation of of Muhammad. That there, uh, that there are some historians that even question whether or not he ever existed. And there is compelling evidence that he never existed. There are no written accounts of him until 300 years after the founding of Islam. Then suddenly they decided, oh, he, and then they started making this the background story. And if you look at the beliefs in Islam, Islam is a is a hodgepodge mixture of of radical Christianity, a Judaism, and paganism. But of course, our politicians want, uh, want to portray them as this loving religion that's on par with Christianity. But, uh, it's really funny. There was a British MP who said, this is not Islam, when referring to the Taliban <laughs> and what the Taliban were doing. No, no, they're the, they're the Islamic State. Well, let's see, the Islamic Caliphate of Afghanistan is what they call themselves. Followers of Jihad and the, and the Quran. Very orthodox Muslims, but no, this isn't Islam. Well, the Democrats have been claiming that the, the um, radical Islams, uh, Islamists aren't Islamists, but actually they're the only ones that are actually following the teachings of Islam. Yeah, whatever those are, they keep changing. Well, as, as Josh pointed out, it's Quran, the ever-shifting kaleidoscope. 
the Quran has been has been rewritten so many times that um, you, depending on which version you pick up, could have entirely different meanings from the other one. Yeah, there are actual differences between the versions. And even Muhammad himself, according to the uh, the the his biographers, stated that parts of the Quran was written by Satan. The artist formerly known as Muhammad. <laughs> Wait, did he say Satan or a jinn? I, I believe he may have been a jinn, but I thought it was Satan. That's where the book, the Satanic Verses, comes from, is discussing the parts of the Quran that were written by Satan. Because I, I, I was pretty sure that there, somewhere in the tale he was supposed to have met a jinn. As if those are good. <laughs> Being jinns are supposed to be demons? And they're, they always have an agenda, according to myth. Always a bad agenda. When they're not slaves. Yeah, they're not after you get... And even the ones they're who are slaves you have a benefit. Well, even the ones who are enslaved will go out of their way to misconstrue your words in order to further their own goals. Yeah, which is usually to get out of slavery and then torment. Yeah. Or possess you. Well, if you've enjoyed this discussion on religion, including Middle Eastern paganism, <clears throat> feel free to hit the like button, subscribe, and catch us next time. You might hear more. <laughs>